Hello YouTube, this is Derek, or Alika 101 and welcome to another Kygrium campaign setting video. This is going to be the third installment in the Pantheon videos for the Chronicles of the campaign setting. This video we're going to talk about the Lords of Balance, the Archdevils, and a couple of philosophies that are alternate, alternate ways to worship in the setting. So what are the Lords of Balance? Well, individually they are known as the Horsemen, and they are collectively called the Lords of Balance. They are unique even among the gods. They are part of neither the greater pantheon nor the lower pantheon. Uh, they venerate balance. They are generally not worshipped by any of the gods, though that doesn't stop cults to a particular horseman from cropping up from time to time. And even on rarer occasions, a cult to all of the lords of balance. The horsemen's true names are unknown and are instead named after the aspect that they venerate. So we have war, pestilence, famine, and death. There are also legends that say that there is a fifth Lord of Balance known as the Arch Lord of Balance. However, he hasn't made his presence known in the setting and it's strictly legend and rumor. But that doesn't mean he doesn't exist. Uh, what makes the Lords of Balance special is that, unlike other deities who draw their strength primarily from being divine beings and from worship from those on the material plane, the Lords of uh, Balance draw their power from the things that are in their name. So war draws power from wars, pestilence, from plagues uh, cropping up famine from those who die uh, by famine and therefore those that or anything that occurs as a famine and death obviously from the deaths of any person on the material plane so that is automatically what makes them special and different however they do not draw power from anything that they themselves have not created or any event they themselves have not orchestrated in some way so for example war gains no power if he hasn't had a hand in a battle that's about to break out. Pestilence gains no power from a plague breaking out that he wasn't directly involved in or in some way involved in. The same can be said for famine and death. However, death normally has his hand in practically everything, knowing full well that every mortal on the material plane dies at some point. So that was a little quick look into the Lords of Balance, and then we're going to quickly cover what is different about the Archdevils in my campaign setting. So Archdevils are what is made up of Hell, each of the great Devils of Hell, and I kept every one of the layers of Hell from the Pathfinder campaign setting book, uh, Book of the Damned, which I have on PDF, and the only thing I changed was Osmodius is not a god, he is a devil who thinks he's a god and wishes that to be worshipped as such. So therefore, there are cults to uh, Asmodeus on the plane, and it's just small and he doesn't have a direct church. The same can be said for the other deities or devils of the plane, uh, Beelzebub, uh, Barbados, all of those other devils, they all have the same kind of thing. They're small cults, but nothing nothing full-blown. Uh, that also takes us to the demon lords. The demon lords of my plane that have the strongest, I don't necessarily want to say following, but presence would be Abraxas, and these are all coming, by the way, from Pathfinder campaign setting book, Book of the Damn Volume 2, the Lords of Chaos, which I've also reviewed. And Abraxas, who's the master of the final incantation, he's demon lord of magic and forbidden lore. Uh, Andrefaku, the razor princess, demon lord of illusions, traps, and knives. But there's also Bahamut, lord of minotaurs, demon lord of labyrinths and beasts. Sithvazug, prince of the blasted heath, demon lord of fungus and parasites. Dagon, the shadow in the sea, demon lord of sea and sea monsters. Discari, Lord of the Locusts, Horde, and Demon Lord of Locusts and Infestation. Cabriri, Him Who Gnaws, the Demon Lord of Ghouls and Graves. 
Kostache, the demon, uh, the deathless frost, demon lord of giants and cold. Then we also have Nastama, the mother of witches, demon lord of cruelty, deception, and hags. Uh, then it should go to Noctuala, Our Lady in Shadow, Demon Lord of Darkness and Lust. Then there is Orcus, who is Prince of Undeath, Demon Lord of Necromancy and the Undead. Pazuzu, King of the Winged Demons, Demon Lord of Winged Creatures. Shax, the Blood Marquis, Demon Lord of Lies and Murder. Shavaska, the Chained Maiden, Demon Lord of Operation Clocks and Prisons. And Soxtabanoth, the Silken Skin, Demon Lord of Perversions and Taboos. So I didn't want to go into any of those in depth because, frankly, they're all listed in Kef Pathfinder campaign setting books and in Pathfinder books in general. So they're not necessarily my creations, but I've incorporated them into my campaign setting. Now we're going to talk about something that is my creation. It's full of uh, borrowed ideas from actual uh, entities in mythology, if you will, or religion. And this is the host. Uh, just as there are the unique and powerful fiends and devils, so too should there also be powerful, good-aligned entities, aside from the gods. And this is the host. This is the angelic host, if you will, that is directly linked to Castiel, but these members are the greatest of the host of the countless angels. They're basically you could call them demigods. They're the angelic beings who have almost who are almost powerful enough to be their own god. They have small followings because of what they do and what they venerate, but they aren't I guess you could say cocky enough to call themselves gods or ignorant enough to call themselves gods, they recognize what they are, and just that they are creatures of massive power. And so there is Elagor, the angel of valor. Elagor is referred to as the angel of knights, and is dedicated and honorable soldier of heaven, depicted in resplendent armor and wielding a lance. Then we have Lefa, the powerful female angel of the seal. Lefa is the guardian of the seal of mortality. Which, if should ever be broken, will sow the end of all life on the material plane. Then there's Anzo, the master of exorcism. Anzo is the black winged angel who purges the souls of mortals from demonic taint and possession. Then there's Raziel, the first and most powerful angel to ascend to the host. Raziel is the six winged archangel of secret regions and supreme mysteries. He passionately defends his followers and those that worship the father of creation, Castiel. Serida. Mother Serida watches over the innocent and guides the wavering back into the light. And finally there is Zadkael. Known as the righteousness of Castiel, Zadkael is the archangel of solace, charity, and gentleness. He comforts those who feel lost in the darkness of the world and gives shelter to those without hope. So those are the six, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, six, yes, six greatest members of the host and each have their own small worship amongst the followers, or the, excuse me, races of the material plane. Lastly, we're going to talk about philosophies. Philosophies is something that I borrowed from the Pathfinder campaign setting because it's actually a really brilliant idea that just as there are multiple religions in here in the real world, so too are there belief systems that don't necessarily have a named deity or anything like that. So... What I have is I have in the philosophies we have Diabolism, the followers of the nine circles of hell, not just a single archdevil, but all of them, all of the different circles. Excuse me. And if someone follows this, they recognize the structure and order that it is created from the chaos of hell, and therefore they worship all of the devils. Excuse me. Yes, devils from hell and would be able to take any of the prestige classes presented in the books of chaos volumes one or two which I talk about in the reviews so that would be the Diabolist and can't remember what the other one would be right now it'll come to me at some point but that's what they are they are just worshipping of hell in general 
And then, in an homage to 23 Penguins 32, Brady, who in his campaign setting has a love for druids, he has touched me with his love for druids and all that is nature, and I tend to always have a druid in my campaign setting. So I thought, why not give an homage to Brady and create a philosophy that I'm calling the Druidic Way. It's the veneration of the natural world, everything to do with nature. While they recognize Sayanin as the, the goddess of nature, they don't directly worship her and instead view every creation of nature as something beautiful. Um, and it's typically only f um, made up of druids. However, that doesn't stop rangers occasionally from entering or fighters even on a rare occasion or any of the other classes for that matter for sometimes finding their way into the druidic way. Um, so what they do is they're uh, always about nature. Its sole focus is nature comes first. Don't destroy nature. They're against building of cities that destroy woodland and you know, the destruction of the natural world. Uh, it's said to be among the oldest philosophies on the material plane that could date back as far as the worship of any of the other gods. So it has a very old following and has a very long following and is all across the material plane and is a very interesting path. I have several ideas for campaigns made with the Druidic way being the focus, or just kind of little tidbits that I've put out that might hint at certain things for certain players in my campaigns to kind of go visit people of the Druidic way. Um, what else can I say about them? Hmm, let's see. I'm trying to give you guys one last little tidbit about them. Uh, da -da -da. <laughs> I'm reading from my. Uh, Microsoft Word document in case you guys have been wondering why I keep looking down at the computer. Da, 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 da. Ah, each member of the Druidic Way spends a day in deep meditation and they commune with the natural forces and they try to find answers in nature over answers from the gods or answers from other human beings and believe messages can be found in the smallest of actions of animal or plant or nature in itself. So be that storm or uh, animal or plant or anything like that. Anything that comes from the natural world could be a sign. So that was the Druidic way and that covers the two philosophies that I wanted to talk about from my campaign setting just to give you guys a taste. And that will take us to the end of all of the deities and different faiths and ways of worship for the Kygrim campaign setting. However, I'm going to do one last video for this segment about the Pantheon. I'm going to talk about the interactions of the gods and their interactions not only amongst each other, but amongst the people of the material plane and the races and uh, you know, how involved are the deities? Do they stand back? Do they actually get in and you know, get their hands dirty, I guess you could say. And uh, this was a question, I'm going to do this video, this coming video, because it was a question brought up by Brady from 23 Penguins 32, and I thought I would put that out there for all of you to hear and uh, give my thoughts on the idea. So thanks for watching. I know these videos are, can be kind of lengthy, but thanks for sticking with them and learning about my campaign setting. I hope everyone is enjoying it. Have a great day.